Hi, we're going to be talking about family failings, Numbers chapter 12. In our study of the book of Numbers, last chapter, chapter 11, we saw the Israelites complaining about their food, and God gives them quail, but there's judgment there as well. Now in chapter 12, Aaron and Miriam are the ones complaining, and they're going to be complaining about Moses, their brother. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1, Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. Now, we don't know anything else about this woman except that she, you know her origins. Uh, she's from Cush, and that usually means, you know, uh, in fact, the word itself means black. So maybe this is sort of a, a racial thing. Uh, and they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us as well? And the Lord heard it. Now notice, the, the thing that sparked off this complaint is because of the, the marriage of Moses. But behind that complaint is a bigger issue. It's an issue that they're resentful because Moses has been selected by God as the one who is the spokesman for God. And they say, wait a minute, hasn't God worked through us as well? That's the big issue. The issue is one of authority and jealousy. Now we read in verse 3 that the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. I, I have to wonder if Moses actually wrote this part or, or maybe somebody else inserted it at a later time. It sort of reminds me of the fellow uh, who was given an award for, for being the most humble man of all and then they took it away from him because he wore it. Uh, but in this case, we're told that Moses was very humble. He wasn't standing upon his own rights. Remember when God had, had come to him and said, Moses, go, go to uh, Egypt and set the Israelites free. Moses, Moses had all sorts of reasons why he was not the man for the job. And suddenly, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron and to Miriam, <laughs> you three <laughs> come out of the tent of meeting. So the three of them came out. And then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the doorway of the tent and he called Aaron and Miriam. They're in trouble. <laughs> and when they had both come forward, he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I the Lord shall make myself known to him in a vision. I shall speak with him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my household with him. I don't speak in a vision. I don't speak in a dream. With him I speak mouth to mouth even openly and not in dark sayings, and he beholds the form of the Lord. Not that he can actually see God, but he had come as close as it was possible to come. He had seen, remember, the afterglow of God. Why then are you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? It's a dangerous thing to speak against the servant of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 and following borrow the language we just read about how we know in part and we prophesy in part but there's coming a time notice when the perfect comes the partial will be done away there's coming a time when our knowledge when our speaking about God's things won't just be in part but will be complete verse 11 he, Paul says, when I was a child, I used to speak as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then, notice that phrase, face to face. Remember how God spoke to Moses mouth to mouth, but the Greek Septuagint translates it the way we see it here in Corinthians, face to face. For now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, just as I also have been fully known. That's how God spoke to Moses. And there's coming a day when he's going to speak to us in the same way. Numbers chapter 12, verse 9. So the anger of the Lord burned against them, and he departed. But when the cloud had withdrawn from over the tent, behold, Miriam was leprous. Now that's, the, that's actually the Greek word uh, that we see in the Septuagint, the, the Greek translation of the Hebrew text is leprous there. So, does it really correspond to modern day leprosy? Well, maybe not, but it was still a skin disease that left her as snow. In other words, her skin was bleached white. And as Aaron turned toward Miriam, behold, she was leprous, which means now she's unclean. 
Then Aaron said to Moses, Oh my Lord, notice, and, and Moses is actually the younger brother, but Aaron says to Moses, Oh my Lord, I beg you, do not account this sin to us, in which we have acted foolishly, and in which we have sinned. And so we have Aaron interceding to Moses on behalf of Miriam, asking that Moses would intercede to God. He says, verse 12, Oh, do not let her be like one dead, whose flesh is half eaten away when he comes from his mother's womb. And Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, Oh God, heal her, I pray. Moses didn't hold any resentment. He loves his sister. And he intercedes for her. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not bear her shame for seven days? Let her be shut up for seven days outside the camp, and afterward she may be received again. She had done that which was against Moses, but really which was against God. And so she's to be outside the camp for a period of recovery. So Miriam was shut up outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not move on until Miriam was received again. Notice, because of the sin of one person, the entire camp goes to a halt. Sin has, sin has repercussions, has lasting impact upon the lives of so many. So what we see here in this larger section, we'll, we'll look at this again next time. In chapter 11, we had the cry of the people. They were complaining about the food, and God gave quail, but he also brought judgment upon the camp. And now we see complaining by Aaron and Miriam and this complaint is against Moses. In the next chapter, we're going to see the missions of the spies. They're going to go through the land, and they're going to come back, and there will be again a complaint against Canaan and against Moses and against God. And then in chapter 14, we're going to see again the cry of the people, judgment of God, and the people will be defeated at Kadesh. So that this entire section is one of defeat, 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 and defeat.